hey guys and welcome back to another youtube video in this video we will be creating a pretty cool application with python that will check the price current price of the bitcoin cryptocurrency and if it falls down to a certain value then it will send us an email notifying about that so yeah that's basically the entire idea of this app so the way we are going to be doing this is I have opened up the coin geeko API uh, and as you can see so basically what this API is is it updates the uh, price of the Bitcoin probably at a daily basis or an hourly basis I don't know that but yeah so basically it updates uh, the Bitcoin price and what we will do is we will pass the data coming in from this API and then just show it uh, I'm not exactly sure we will just store it and then we will just check its value and if it falls down then we will send us an email all right so let's just get started so I will just open up my VS code here so I've already created a folder called uh, Bitcoin price checker so the first thing that we want to do is we want to import requests and now we want to specify the url that we want to uh, request uh, so we can simply just specify this url over here uh, i probably will have this url in the uh, as a link in the description so you guys can copy it so next what we will say is we will say response is equals to request dot get the url and then we can just say print out the response dot text so now i will just open up my terminal window and we will simply run python 3 main dot py now we, it does uh, and i don't know why it's taking so much of time to save my python file uh, mainly because i'm running many processes all right there we go as you can see my python file is saved so now i can simply run it over here and you will see that we return so much of data now literally 99% of this data that we are returning is of no use to us the reason being we own now I will probably be having the dollar price of Bitcoin cryptocurrency but you can have any other uh, uh, what do you say currencies like any other currency like INR uh, probably the pounds anything like that so we will now actually pass this data and only return the data that we need uh, and uh, we will just get rid of the uh, rest of the data so if you will look into this uh, the actual data is stored in the market data current price so we have figured that out and over here we will it will probably somewhere there will be BTC so we want to check the market data all right so how do we actually do that so the first thing that we want to do is we want to convert this entire response to a JSON format so it is a response dot JSON and now we can actually pass and play around with this response so we can just get the btc underscore price is equals to the jsonated response and in there uh, what do we want to get well if you look at it inside of the market data we have this thing called the current price and uh, it then basically uh, goes over the various cryptocurrencies uh, as it is seen over here so that's basically what uh, is being done so let's actually do that so the way we can actually work with this is we can simply just provide market data uh, over here and I think this should work now I am myself I am like doing this uh, figuring this out with you guys so I probably might be wrong but let's figure that out so let's run the python remain.py file again all right 
so uh, it should be that all right so let's actually figure out Actually, you know what? Let's just go coin uh, gecko API because I do know that they have some uh, good documentation, so we can use that. So let's actually just quickly go away. So, coins list, coin market, uh, get current data. There we go. So, this is what we want uh, to return over here. So we can simply click on try it out and uh, we can simply just pass in Bitcoin Bitcoin and we can simply just execute this and it should give us a URL that we can use for this. If this request uh, returns a status code of 200 uh, which means that there was no error. So as you can see over here, we do get this entire data, which is exactly what we want. So we can simply just copy paste this request URL and instead of having that coins request URL, uh, because this will just get, uh, this will make our like uh, work a lot more easier. Uh, previously, it would take a lot of parsing and playing around but now it's going to be very very straightforward so as you can see the data is also redu uh, reduced by a lot now the only thing that we want to return now is let's uh, is the price of the bitcoin in us dollars so now we just need to kind of figure out exactly where uh, is that store small country of origin date coin gecko rank developer score all right there you go market data as you can see it's in market data so we all do know that all right so what i will also do now is just go over here print out this you uh, uh, and just visit this url over here so we can you know uh, view this in a bit of a bigger Screen. Also, you can as you, as you can see, this does provide some useful information about the Bitcoin thing. It uses the SHA-256 hashing system and stuff like that. If you don't know what that means, it's okay. Uh, that's just like. So I think what we will need to do to return the BTC underscore price is equals to the JSONated response, the post index, and oops. and the market underscore data i think what was that i think it was that only market data and in there we just want to return the current underscore price i think this should work i hope it works okay key error one so maybe we don't need that i don't know let's see and uh, all right that's exactly what we wanted uh, so we don't get any error so now you will see when I just print out the BTC underscore price over here I will just get rid of this print statement you will see the data that it prints out so as you can see now it just prints out AD uh, ARS AOD now we want to search for USD and as you can see it's given right here so it's currently $62,253 so now what I will do is I will simply just say USD in here and now we will clear the terminal screen and run it again. There we go. As you can see it prints that out. So now all we will do is we will just convert this entire thing to a floating point uh, because probably if it goes down to like cents uh, then also we do want to ensure that also. So as you can see now this entire thing is a floating point. So we can actually compare two prices easily. Otherwise, it would have been a lot more difficult. So, uh, storing, storing the current BTC price, converting the data to a JSON format, 
and uh, we can get rid of this print statement since it's not necessary specifying the api url and that's all we need for uh, the actual data pulling in from the api portion uh, and now we pretty much uh, need to actually um, we need to actually check if so a certain condition a certain price is met and if that's the case then uh, we want to send an email to the person notifying that well this like a uh, bitcoin fell down or uh, like uh, the like something like that uh, i think you guys figured that out so we need to import a few libraries for this we need to import import smt P lib smtp lib and ssl uh, just these two libraries uh, so uh, smtp lib, smtp is actually stands for simple message transfer protocol it's a type of an internet protocol uh, in case if you don't know uh, so yeah it's actually uh, uh, one of the most widely used protocols uh, like then they have imap pop uh, stuff like that so in case if you don't know what that means it's totally fine so now for actually doing this i actually have to enter my email now i don't really want to do that in front of the entire uh, youtube audience so what i will do currently is i'll just uh, write like the sender as the email and the password as the password and i won't actually actually uh, enter it in right now so we can yeah oops what just happened all right, so what I'll say is this is sender is equals to email. So you have to put in your email over here and password is equals to you just have to put your password in here. All right, uh, now currently I'll just make this a string so it does not throw me an error. But you want to put in your email over here. Uh, don't put in email and PWD because otherwise. So now the receiver in this case is going to be the sender uh, uh in this case now in a case when uh, the receiver won't be the sender then you will have to you know check who it is and stuff like that but in this case this is just a really basic application so we won't need to deal with uh, all of that complexity so now we can just add a message uh, the message we can just say uh, now i pretty much want to send this message uh when the price of bitcoin really just crashes down uh so we can just say uh bitcoin uh has fallen down to uh forty forty thousand dollars actually i think forty thousand it usually falls down to that value these days the current price is uh, we can simply just pass in the btc underscore price now there's one thing so uh, you want to uh, so now don't put this into a while to loop uh, because you want to continuously check that if you do that add a delay because otherwise it will completely spam your inbox uh half of which like half of the messages will go into the spam folder but just don't uh put it into a while rule loop without any delay all right i uh, like if you do that then you know what it, your inbox will just be raided uh the reason being uh, if bitcoin falls below thirty thousand until the time it actually raises its value and goes above thirty thousand it will constantly send you the message that hey bitcoin fell down and this is the current price and you don't want that right you obviously don't want that to happen with you so you can just say context is equals to ssl dot create underscore default underscore context now i think there is also one more requirement if you want to work with uh, smtp lib you need to turn off uh, the two-factor authentication uh, because basically what that does is it will block such emails being sent to your account so that's actually one thing that you need to uh, look into you need to 
uh, block two factor authentication please do that because otherwise it will uh, throw you an error saying that uh, well something didn't work so now we can say with smtp lib dot smtp underscore ssl now in here now it depends now this part is something that you will probably uh, it will be different for you or it will probably be the same so since i am going to be i am i use gmail and not something like yahoo or uh, something like that i will write g uh, smtp.gmail.com in case if we are using something like yahoo or uh, outlook or something like that then you probably will change this so just google what the name of uh, gmail uh, like what do you, you can what to write when you are using something like uh, what should be the smtp dot uh, if you are using uh, yahoo or any other thing apart from gmail because otherwise uh, it will pretty much just uh, not work you can't just put in yahoo directly i'm pretty sure that might be the entire thing only just put in yahoo instead of gmail but you know uh, you probably uh, there's a good chance that it can't be that it can be something else so yeah so now we can simply just say uh, server dot send send mail so we can simply send a mail and that will be the sender and the receiver and i am pretty sure that's all we need to do yeah so now uh the other thing we only want to send this mail if the bitcoin price if the btc underscore price has fallen if that is equal to lesser than uh 30 30 000 only then i want to send this to all right so that's all we need to do i'm pretty sure that's ex like that's all we need to do that's all the code we need to write for this as you can see it's not too long now what i will do is i will pause the video and i will actually enter in my email address and my password over here and then i will just execute this program and i will show you that it works all right so i just finished testing this now i had to just uh, fix a few errors so all i did was i just uh, in the send mail i added the message and over here i just reduced this to seventy thousand because otherwise it would obviously not send the email right so yeah so now i'll just show you that this thing actually worked so if i just go over here uh now uh if i just go over here then you will see that it does print this out which is exactly what we want and that's pretty much uh the entire um uh project so it basically will print this out whenever the bitcoin price falls down now i uh, remember when i told you how to put it into a white loop like not to put it into a white loop now in case if you want to put this entire thing inside of a while to loop what i want you to do is i want you to indent this first oops and then what you want to do is you simply want to add a time dot sleep and you want to probably make it sleep for like a few like a few hours as you can see over here i think this is for a few days so you want to add a delay of at least a day because otherwise it will continuously spam your inbox uh, which is obviously something that you don't want so yeah that's pretty much uh, what i wanted to uh, show you guys for this video uh, so yeah this is a pretty neat uh that uh when it like uh this is a pretty neat implementation like uh something that uh we can do with, with just a few lines of python code but has so many implications so yeah uh, like you can be do uh, 